Hello. In editing, I realized that I never started the vlog, so this is the beginning of the vlog. We're in Puerto Rico for two weeks, and well, actually, now it's over, but not for you, for me. And over those two weeks, I have read three books and three volumes of manga, which I'll be discussing throughout the duration of this vlog, as well as take you on a whole bunch of adventures that we had. It's been a wonderful time. I've had a lot of fun putting this vlog together. I hope you enjoy watching it. So, welcome to Puerto Rico. bring a camera or a microphone or anything the sun setting quality of this video may not be top-notch I hope you'll be able to enjoy it anyway I finished my first book it's guards guards and oh I loved it unsurprisingly I so one piece is one of my top two favorite series of all time I read the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy series last year and it's my it was it was my number one Hitchhiker's book one was my number one best book that I read all year long and it's on my top five best series now so I'm unsurprised that my introduction to Discworld was a roaring success the humor in this is brilliant I love this dry witty chaotic but intentional sort of humor uh, just opening up on the scene of somebody trying to find his secret society and stumbling on the wrong one and then going through this ridiculous series of phrases to try to get him in the door and all the chaos that comes with that was the perfect beginning and then we cut to carrot our protagonist who's grown up as a dwarf doing dwarf things with his dwarf family there's just this awkward little thing about him that he is a little bit too tall six feet actually so we start off the book meeting carrot with him being told being sat down to have the difficult conversation that in fact he's not a dwarf he's a human and they kind of just hoped that he would grow out of growing but since he never did it's time to just come clean <laughs> and there's a reason why he doesn't perfectly fit into the society like they expected so he joins the guards which is this really backwards ridiculous society and he um is a little bit too much of a law keeper as a guard I, I won't say anymore because you know i just if you're gonna read it i want you to enjoy it but shockingly unsurprisingly i love it i love the humor i love pratchett's dialogue i love his characters and i love that he uses all this wit and humor to have this incredible discussion of social commentary and he does it so well it's a book that has me laughing constantly underlining way too many pages and way too many sentences and also stopping and thinking and discussing some of these things that he wants to talk about and it's just so good so i'm continuing this uh, i think it's the night watch arc of the Discworld series. I'm going to continue this and then I did a short where I asked people to let me know where to go next because Discworld is a series that you can just kind of go wherever you want. I think I'm going to do The Witches next. I already own the first book in The Witches and I think that it sounds like it's going to be fun since I can go wherever I want with Discworld. That's where I'm going to go but I don't have it with me here on vacation so it will be in this vlog but I'm for sure I'm committing to reading a, I'm gonna finish this first before I do witches. I think I already said this. I, I'm committing to reading uh, at least one Discworld book a month for the remainder of this year. It's been said, it's out in the world, it can't be unsaid, um, but I don't think that that's gonna be a challenge for me because this book was 
an absolute breeze to take on the beach and get a little bit of water damage. Sorry about that, all you book elitists, but this book holds memories. But I'm quite happy about that. Welcome to the vlog and welcome to Puerto Rico. Hope you enjoy it. our last morning in Aguadilla. The last time we came to Puerto Rico, we spent our first week here in Aguadilla, and then our second week we, was, we were closer to San Juan, and we just, Aguadilla was where we fell in love with Puerto Rico, so we wanted to, when we returned, we wanted our first week to be here again, and we've had the best time. It's been so nostalgic. It's been so refreshing to return here. Um, but this is our last morning here as I drink my morning coffee and listen to the morning doves. I'm sad but excited to go explore Cabo Rojo. It's been a wonderful week. We've had so much fun exploring. We've had amazing adventure days and we've had a lot of fun being back here. Uh, but it'll be good to explore a new area too. So I'm excited for that as well. I hope you've enjoyed some of the footage that we've taken as we've been exploring. We've had so much fun. But I read, I read Vagabond, so let's talk about that, because that's what we're here for, isn't it? Vagabond. Unfortunately, the binding in this broke pretty much immediately as I was started reading it, so that's a shucks deal. There's even pages falling out. Um, I'm not even, I didn't even take this one to the beach. This one was just in, in the house the whole time, uh, but yeah, the binding just failed, unfortunately. Um, but anyway, the book. So this is a bind up of the first three volumes of Vagabond and it's a very interesting start. So it's a very slow start. It's a very uh, quiet start is what I say oftentimes and people never know what I mean. But it's an introduction to characters and to ideals and to philosophies and lifestyles and, and, and the expectations uh, set for culture and for our protagonist. So I don't, this is a samurai, it's a samurai story. It's based on a historical samurai who I will read up on, or a historical figure who I will read up on eventually, but I don't want to just yet uh, because I know nothing about what direction the story is going to go into. And so I, I'm literally at, I'm at, I have the advantage that I get to experience this story, I get to experience what's going to happen alongside the protagonist. So I, I want to do it that way. All the information I have is just little uh, pieces and nuggets that my patrons are giving me as I'm reading along, as I'm getting, as it's getting, as these inform this information is getting relevant. First impressions of the of these first three volumes, um, I I'm not on the edge of my seat. I'm not hooked. I'm not enamored with it, but I'm very 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 intrigued. I don't think this is very spoilery at all, but as you can see, it's a very art heavy story. Um, so there's very few words. There are oftentimes pages, long stretch of no words at all, of just visuals. Um, and even when there are words, it's not dense, it's very light. So it's these three volumes, you could just fly right through it. Like it's such a fast action heavy, uh, read that you could read it all in one setting. I have really taken my time with it because the art is so stunning and because not just is the art stunning, he's a, he's a phenomenal artist. This mangaka is a phenomenal artist, but he conveys personalities, intent, um, emotions, um, values and choices of characters through the imagery so well. Like he'll have a scene where one thing is going on. Uh, a character is fighting off a group of people on his own, screaming out his friend's name, making sure that he's safe. And in the uh, and then in the, the next page, that friend is doing something completely different. I won't go into details about it, um, but he'll just draw that very simple thing. And that so clearly establishes these characters intents and and values and and choices 
so well. So we start off with a character who's a samurai, who's a legendary, like from a very young age, he was incredibly talented in, in what he was able to do and who he was able to kill and how effectively he could kill. And he's kind of, he's known for his incredible fighting prowess. And he uh, is just, I just don't want to tell you too much. So that's him. And, uh, and already we're having a lot of his own ideals and self-worth and philosophies, perspective of the world being challenged and him and us, the readers, having a lot to chew on as well. While this isn't a story that I, is gripping me at this point, I'm not you know on the edge of my seat as I'm reading it, I, I definitely am gonna be, con gonna be continuing because there's so much that is drawing me into it in this short span of time. And I know that this looks thick, but with it being primarily visual, while it looks thick, it's such a fast read that it, like, not much time has passed since I've started this. Anyway, I'm really fascinated with the start of this. I'm really excited to see where we go with this character and his journey and um, the other the other characters that have been introduced. He clearly is a character while he is very cold and um, has no problem killing anyone at any point in time. Uh, he also clearly very deeply cares about the people in his life. So I'm just excited to see where this all goes and where the story is gonna take us. And that's that. Vagabond, uh, the first deluxe volume done, which is the first three volumes. If you uh, love the series, Die Hard Fan, I am reading it over on my Patreon, discussing it as I read each little section. And I'm also going to be discussing it book by book with Philip Chase, who is the person that I discussed uh, Vinland Saga with book by book. And that's gonna be on the second channel, which is always linked in the description of my videos. So you can uh, watch our more in-depth discussions there as well. We might even be having another booktuber on for this particular discussion who is a huge fan of the series. So look out for that. But anyway, again, I don't have the sequel. I don't have the next book with me here on vacation, but it will definitely be continued in February. On to Cabo Rojo. in Cabo Rojo right now. We're actually only here for a very short period of time. Um, we, so our first week was in Aguadilla. The first time we came to Puerto Rico, that's where we fell in love with Puerto Rico. We came back and that's where we kind of reestablished. This is a place that we're gonna keep coming back to. This is, we're in love with this island. Um, and so then we came down to Cabo Rojo. We also spent a day in Rincon and we went to Steps Beach, which was just the best snorkeling experience. Amazing reefs, beautiful fish. I got to hang out with a sea turtle for a little bit. I didn't bring the GoPro with me, so you, there's no video evidence. You just have to trust me. But I got to hang out with a sea turtle. He was just chilling. I was just chilling. He'd look up at me, make sure I was not doing anything to him. And then he'd just keep floating and we'd just let the waves take us back and forth. And we were hanging out for a long time. It was really nice. And now we're headed to Arecibo for the very end of our trip. So I'm excited. I don't know. I'm having a great time. 
Island of the Lost. This is a nonfiction following two shipwrecks that happen on the same island at the same time, but on opposite sides of the island. They never know that the other one is there and they have very, very different experiences. One group of people comes together and finds ways to survive and the other group of people completely falls apart like really, really fast. And at first, so naturally, this is nonfiction, naturally the group of people that come together and that uh, work hard to survive and to maintain their sanity are going to keep more thorough journals than the group that turns to anarchy. Um, so naturally the one shipwreck is more documented and therefore takes a lot more pages. So there's a piece of me as I was reading it that was like, oh my goodness, <laughs> we've spent a hundred pages on one shipwreck. I would really like a back and forth and kind of seeing okay, you arrived and you arrived, you start making a shelter and you start making a shelter. You know, I wanted to see them in tandem, but I understand why this author couldn't do that. And what I will say is it was effective in that spending a hundred pages with one group of people, seeing their ingenuity, seeing how they overcame hurdles, like uh, the group not always getting along or like uh, having to learn how to hunt seals or having to fight off scurvy when they started showing symptoms. Um, a lot of different hurdles that they overcame. I really lived with them for a hundred pages and was so impressed by their ingenuity and by their resilience. And then when you switch to the other shipwreck, the stark and rapid deteriorization um, was fascinating it was it was quite the contrast anyway i really don't want to say anything more um about this than that as far as like what we're doing what i will say is um i thought that it was a fascinating story i really enjoyed reading it i i i think that it was a really cool evaluation of different groups of people and and different levels of camaraderie of leadership of persistence um, of problem solving having a leader who can see problems and find creative ways to um, to sidestep them seeing them coming and saying okay this is going to go poorly what's something creative that i can do to make sure it doesn't happen like having that guy in your crew having that person in your crew how essential that is and how different things can go when you don't have any of those things so it was really fascinating in that sense um i will say that it feels a bit so this is 370 pages long and it does feel a bit like it was more like a 200 page book that the author needed to make a certain length in order to publish and so she was like let's just talk about seat let's just talk about seal mating for like a really long time that said i think probably other than just the story itself which was fascinating i think my favorite part about this book is the inconsistencies uh i love how the author would just fully address that and just be like yeah, so this guy says that this incident happened, this guy says that it didn't, and then that guy, he doesn't even mention it in his journal. So we could probably deduce that this is what happened, uh, which I think is really interesting. Like even in this survival state, even these guys who said, if we die, bury our journals with us so that people can know what happened, they're still kind of lying a little bit in their journals. Like you still, you still have that piece of humanity that's like, I'm mad, so I'm gonna write my journal this way, you know, or, or, or whatever. But we also got the emotional size of them, you know, one guy leaving his, not, not leaving his family, but, you know, his family is left behind and he doesn't know if they're being provided for. And just a lot of really interesting human elements to the story as well. I wouldn't say that it's the most uh, narratively strong nonfiction that I've read. I very much read more informational, like, hey, I read some journals and they were really cool. Let me compile the information. As opposed to, I read some journals, they were really cool. Now let me give you a narrative thread about them. Um, so, I mean, like, if that matters greatly to you, know that going in, but it was good. I, I quite enjoyed reading this. My cousin, who we're on this trip with, not my cousin, Corey's cousin, he's my cousin, I married the family also read this and also loved it. But I have been reading one more book throughout the duration of this trip. I should finish it up in Arecibo, so see you there.
waiting for the rain, which has been very off and on. We're waiting for it to be off, to stop, so that we can go on one last adventure. But until then, I figured, let's talk about this last book. So this is a collection of folk stories from Puerto Rico, from the hills of Puerto Rico. The book starts with an introduction explaining the translation, some of the history behind these stories that were passed down orally, and how they became collected on paper, why there are multiple versions of each one, as well as just some of the history of Puerto Rico, which I really, really enjoy reading and then after that we get into the actual folk stories um, which was also really nice as someone who's read a lot of Grimm's fairy tales and a lot of independent classic fairy tales and love them it was really really fun to see some classic fairy tales that I'm familiar with and that I have read our version of and seeing what the version the Puerto Rican version is how they differ how they're similar uh, as well as reading brand new folk stories to me that I've never experienced before I mean it's a collection of folk stories so I don't have a lot to say about it other than just that I had a really nice time traveling through Puerto Rico chipping away at this just reading one or two folk stories a day it is in Spanish and in English it's ha everything is told in Spanish first and then translated to English so um, what you see here it's actually half the page length that I ended up reading but I read it in English this time. I'm working on my Spanish and I'm trying to get better. So maybe next time I'm in Puerto Rico, I can read this again in Spanish next time. It's starting to rain on me, so I'll wrap this up. But this was the final book that I read in Puerto Rico. I really enjoyed it. It was a lovely experience to be able to read some of the history as well as some of the folklore while I'm exploring this island that I love. And we've had an amazing time. Two weeks of adventures and it's been incredible. This island truly is the island of enchantment. I mean, you go into the mountains and it's the most wondrous landscape. It's mountains unlike I've seen anywhere else. You go to the beaches and each beach is so different from the last and has so many incredible things to offer. There's waterfalls everywhere you turn. Go to each individual piece of this island and you get to explore something completely new. We've been here twice now and we are for sure in a long-term commitment with this island. We will be returning again and I can't wait. I can't wait to come back. And if you enjoyed this reading vlog, I post weekly reading vlogs on my second channel, uh, which you should check out. It's always linked in the description of my videos. I'm not in Puerto Rico every week, but I do try to have adventures as much as I can. So there's usually fun B-roll in those as well. Thank you for joining me. I post videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on this channel, Tuesdays and Thursdays on the second channel. I'll see you again soon. Bye.